In a typical Kubernetes implementation, you could have a mix of individual users, groups, and service accounts, which are referred to as subjects. You can manage the access for these subjects using RBAC, role-based access control. In this RBAC method, you can create roles which will consist of various actions or verbs that one can perform on the resources like pods, deployment, etc. You can also create cluster roles which could have different privileges on some resources with a wider scope such as nodes, persistent volumes, etc. You also need a way to associate your roles and cluster roles with your subjects. And this can be achieved by means of role binding and cluster role binding resources. So when do you use roles and role bindings? And when do you use cluster roles and cluster role bindings? If you're working with only a single namespace, then you can just use roles and role bindings. That should be able to serve most of your needs. If your need is to be able to grant the same kind of access to subjects across multiple namespaces, then you could use cluster roles and role bindings. Finally, if you want to grant some kind of access to the whole cluster, then you'll need to use cluster roles and cluster role bindings. Here's an example. I have a user called Tom who does not have the ability to view pod information in the default namespace. Let's fix this. I'm going to switch to Kubernetes admin context and create a role first. Here's the YAML file for it. In the first line, we specify the API Kubernetes provides to manage access. We specify the kind of resource we want to create. In the metadata section, you'll have things like the namespace, where the role should be created, and a name for it. Finally, we have the rules to define what type of actions we want to perform on which resources. I'm going to go ahead and apply this YAML file and go to the next step, which is to create a role binding. If you look at the role binding YAML file, apart from specifying the usual metadata information, we basically assign the role that we just created to the user who needs it. Now let's apply the role binding YAML file, switch back to the test user context and check whether the user can view the pods that are running on this cluster. Yes, that seems to be working. If the user tries to access other resources, it should fail. And that's how you regulate access using RBAC.